Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will cover cardiac murmurs in detail. Cardiac murmurs are abnormal heart sounds that one can encounter during cardiac auscultation and are an important finding to arrive at a diagnosis or need for further cardiac evaluation. Sounds of some murmurs are included in this video. For a better appreciation of these sounds, please use your headphones. So, without further ado, let's begin. To simplify things, we will take different characteristics of murmurs one by one and try to know about different murmurs. The characteristics which we will consider are the timing of the murmur during the cardiac cycle, duration of the murmur, their pitch, intensity, location, and whether they radiate to another area of precordium or not. Practically speaking, all of these features are combined when we describe a murmur. At the end of this video, we will give you an example of the murmur description. So, starting with the timing of the murmurs. As you know, during cardiac auscultation, we simultaneously palpate the carotid pulse of the patient for appreciation of the timing of heart sounds and murmurs during a cardiac cycle. Based on the occurrence during a cardiac cycle, murmurs can be systolic, diastolic, or can be continuous. Systolic murmurs, as the name suggests, are heard during the cardiac systole. That is, the phase between the first and second heart sounds. The murmur occurs after S1, but before S2, and coincides with the feeling of a carotid pulse. Diastolic murmurs, on the other hand, occur after S2, and before S1, after the carotid upstroke. A continuous murmur is heard throughout the cardiac cycle. Let's proceed to the next feature, duration of murmur. Based on the duration, the systolic murmurs are of three types. Ejection systolic, pan-systolic, and late systolic. An ejection systolic murmur starts at the beginning of systole and then reaches its peak in mid-systole. It is also known as crescendo-decrescendo murmur. This murmur is characteristic of aortic stenosis. Pan-systolic murmur, as the name suggests, is audible throughout the systole and has a constant intensity as well throughout. It is also called a holosystolic murmur. This murmur is heard in mitral or tricuspid regurgitations and in ventricular septal defects. The next systolic murmur is late systolic. It starts in the middle of the systole and then extends until S2. This murmur is heard in cases of mitral valve prolapse. Coming to diastolic murmurs. We again have three types in the diastolic murmurs category as well. These are early diastolic, mid diastolic, and late diastolic murmurs. Early diastolic murmur, as the name indicates, starts just with the second heart sound. This murmur is heard in aortic insufficiency or rare pulmonary regurgitation. During diastole, the aortic and pulmonary valves are closed to prevent the backflow of blood into the ventricles. But, valve insufficiency cannot prevent this backflow of blood across the valve during diastole, and the early diastolic murmur is heard. The second diastolic murmur is a mid-diastolic murmur. This murmur is low-pitched, generated by turbulent blood flow across a narrowed atrioventricular valve during passive ventricular filling. A typical example is mitral stenosis, where the mid-diastolic murmur is heard at the apex. Rare tricuspid stenosis also produces mid-diastolic murmur, but it is heard on the left sternal border.
Now few words about the third diastolic phase murmur, that is, late diastolic murmur. This murmur is more commonly known as presystolic accentuation, instead of late diastolic murmur. As indicated by its name, it is heard in the last third of the diastole, where the atrial contraction pushes the remaining atrial blood into the ventricles. When there is stenosis ahead of this flow, this murmur is generated. It is also a featured murmur of mitral stenosis. It shall be noted that this accentuation is lost during atrial fibrillation. This is because now the atrial contraction in the last third of diastole, which was responsible for the generation of this murmur, is absent, and so is the presystolic accentuation. Coming to the final type of murmur based on the duration is continuous murmur. This is not a feature murmur of valvular diseases but is heard in some vascular abnormalities, such as patent ductus arteriosus and arteriovenous fistula. This is also called a machinery murmur and is heard continuously during both systole and diastole. Before proceeding, let's recap the main murmur types that one can encounter during physical examination. These are ejection systolic, pan-systolic, late systolic, early diastolic, mid-diastolic, late diastolic, and continuous murmurs. Now let's explore murmur types based on their pitch. The pitch of the murmur is either high or low. High pitch murmurs are easily audible with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Murmurs of the aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation are high pitched. A low pitched murmur, on the other hand, is audible with the bell of the stethoscope with careful listening. An example of a low pitched murmur is the mid diastolic rumble of mitral stenosis. Let's proceed to the next feature the murmur intensity. Levine's grading classifies a murmur intensity into six grades, from grade one being a faint murmur that is audible only on careful listening in a quiet environment, to grade six being the loudest so that the murmur can be heard even with a stethoscope just lifted off the precordium. All grades can be found in systolic murmurs, however, diastolic murmurs' intensity rarely goes beyond grade three. For grading of murmurs, please check out our video on this topic. Now let's talk about murmurs according to their location. All cardiac auscultatory areas should be auscultated one by one. Systolic murmurs can be audible over a wide area, while diastolic murmurs, on the other hand, are only audible over specific affected valve areas. For example, mitral stenosis murmurs are heard over the apex and aortic regurgitation over the left sternal edge. As mentioned already, systolic murmurs are audible over a wide area, determine the area where it is loudest. Coming to the last feature, which is the radiation of murmur. While murmurs are usually most intense at one specific listening post, they often radiate to other listening areas of the precordium. This is mainly a feature of systolic murmurs. These murmurs radiate in the direction of blood flow across the valve. For example, mitral regurgitation murmur radiates from the apex to the left axilla, aortic stenosis murmur radiates from the right second intercostal space to the neck, and VSD murmur from the left sternal border to the right side of the sternum. And with this, we have concluded all the murmur features. Let's combine all features now to describe a murmur for example, mitral stenosis murmur, to make sense of what we have described. And, by the way, this is how murmur is described in practice as well. On cardiac auscultation of this young patient, who is a known case of rheumatic heart disease, there is a loud first heart sound, an opening snap, that is followed by a low-pitched, mid-diastolic murmur of grade 2 by 6 intensity, 
with presystolic accentuation of the murmur. The murmur is best audible at the cardiac apex, with the patient lying in the left lateral position and breath held in expiration. With this, we have come to the end of this video. We hope this was useful for you. Please share your thoughts in the comments. See you around in our other videos. Thanks for watching.